Yeah. And I was hoping they'd get a chance to say something about it because I, I was talking to Tom Frank and he, uh, he he revealed to me that the enemy is trying to discredit Brother Branham as being a true prophet. Mm -hmm. He's using the cornerstone as a as a significant error in his message, claiming that there was cornerstone was busted into and there's nothing in it. Absolutely they're correct. And I'll tell you why. Because the day after the funeral, Marilyn and I stayed that night in the motel, and as we, before we started home, we thought we would go to the, the tabernacle and also go down to the cemetery, which was only two blocks away. Incidentally, they didn't use a funeral car to take the body to the cemetery. They carried the casket down the street and took it to the cemetery and committed it. But we wanted to pay our last respects. So as we was going by the tabernacle, we saw a group of the brothers with a jackhammer busting into the original cornerstone that Brother Branham had put in there. Yes. And you busted into the cornerstone, and we saw it. At the time that it busted into the cornerstone, there was a form of a cylinder that had been shaped around the concrete that nothing in the world would permit that to happen unless there had been a cylinder in that. Wow. It's wow. for your sisters, maybe you might be able to understand it a little better if you took pudding or jello, set it up, put it in the refrigerator and just open it up. Would you have a cavity in the center of it? No, you wouldn't. No. It'd be a solid mess. No. The same way with concrete. Concrete always falls, always fills up the complete area. But this Con this cornerstone had had a cylinder of some sort, perhaps the uh, size of a Coca-Cola can or something. Marilyn and I both saw it at the same time. Praise the Lord. So there was actually, a, Brother Branham had said he put something in the cornerstone, and yes. he did. Yes. But God did not want it revealed, so God mysteriously <laughs> took it out, and I, it's the biggest miracle I've ever witnessed in my life. Praise so the Lord. Brother Wade, Raised from the dead, I see all kind of healings. But how in the world would anything take that out of that concrete except Almighty God? Amen. 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 <laughs> so that, that, to me, that, that, that is fantastic. Praise the Lord. I so then they replaced the canter stone, of course, because there was a cavity in there. The one they opened up that they're criticizing now Brother Branham on was naturally nothing in it. I see. Because they, they put the cornerstone in. The one we saw open was the one Brother Brandon put in there, and there was a definite cavity in Brother and I both saw. Tremendous. Right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Uncle Bill had his heart attack, his first heart attack, Brother Sister Dow called Brother Branham and asked if he would pray for Brother Bill. He said, I'll come up and see him. So he drove all the way from Jeffersonville to Lima. I had some of us in here was at the hospital. And uh, and it was gonna take Uncle Bill back upstairs for some further test or stress test or something. I forget what it was. Of course Aunt Glass was a nurse and she knew that Uncle Bill was critical. So she thought she couldn't leave the hospital while he was there. But she wanted Brother Bram to see where where they lived. So she asked me to take him to the house. I took him to the house, and he was very alert to everything. He noticed that there's three entrances to the outside, and he noticed that there's seven steps going up to the porch, and he noticed there was five steps from the porch into the house. He's very alert to all these type of things. Well, while we were gone, or well, just just before we left, before Brother Bram had left, everybody was standing out there in the hall. And Sister Dow could ask Brother Bram questions that the rest of us were always afraid to ask him. <laughs> she says, Brother Bram, she says, how will we know the rapture's on? He says, take me for example. I don't know if any of you remember when he said this or not. But he says, take me for example. Now F.F. F. Bosworth was, and he were very close friends. F.F. F. Bosworth had been gone four or five years prior to this. So he was a dead man. He says, take me for example, he says, I'll see Brother Bosworth again, and I'll have fellowship with him for 30 or 40 days. Remember that? And then Gladys spoke up again, she says, 
and the body change will be painful. And he said, yes, it'd be just for an instant. This mortal's got to put on immortality. Praise the Lord. And that, that's not on tape, but that was spoken in Memorial <laughs> Hospital here in Lima High. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> it was going up in the elevator, and this is when Brother Brandon had his, I think it was in Dallas, Texas, when all the brothers were down there. And he started hemorrhaging real bad. We rushed him to the hospital. And I knew Brother Brandon would want to know about Uncle Bill. It was the last night of the service. I knew what motel Brother Bram was staying in, so I went and woke him up at about, about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, knocked on the door, and he come to the door, and I told him that we had to rush Uncle Bill to the hospital because he was hemorrhaging. He said, well, what hospital is it in? And I told him, he says, oh, will you go back? He says, I'll be there in a little bit. So I, I went back to the hospital, I waited on him, and Brother Bram come in, and I rode up the elevator with him. He's standing behind me, and he's had like a feeling be in my spirit. It was the strangest spirit mm -hmm. ever, fair feeling I ever felt. I could knew he was in my spirit. He said I had a good, honest, honest, loyal heart, and he said he saw me like a minister. I scared me to death because I would never want that respons responsibility, you know, being a pastor. That scared me to death. I said, "You mean I'll be a preacher?" He says, "No." I'm thankful for that. <laughs> so I don't know what it meant. It just he just left us standing. So I don't know about the foundation or giving testimony. Or what it is. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, Praise the Lord. My sister uh, Becky, Brother Bram's daughter Becky, had been up visiting Brother and Sister Dow. So when we went down to hear Brother Bram preach, I don't know where it was in Shreveport. Was it Shreveport? I think it was in Shreveport. Sister Becky drove their car, and I drove our car. And we went down there, and, and when we got to the motel where Brother Branham had, had, had he was staying, I carried Becky's suitcases up to Brother Branham's motel room. And he always had two rooms. He'd have a room for he and Sister Meaty, and the other room for the children. So I took the bags in, and to this day, I don't know how he and I ended up in the one room by ourselves. And he, and he started telling me about different people having dreams of his end. He said, perhaps shot. And he pointed to a hole here and here. And when he died, that's what he had. He'd been feeding him through the throat. Mm -hmm. And they'd operated on the side of his head to relieve the pressure from the brain that was swelling from the accident. And that's how he died. He had those two holes that he told me about. Incredible. 